welcome back to Acer P Bonsai. We are here today with our Bill Valvanis Dwarf Character Japanese Maple Seedling. We're going to do a repot and take a look at the roots and assess what we need to do to move this tree forward. First thing we're going to do is get this moss off the top. This is a really fast growing water moss. Uh, I like to use this stuff for my trees in development. It grows really fast. It's just really great at water retention. So it's going to allow you to keep your maples in smaller containers. And if you have to go all day at work between waterings, this moss is going to really help keep that nice humid environment around the roots. You do need to be careful. As you can see, it will grow onto the trunk a little bit. So if we need to treat this with a little bit of vinegar later on in the spring, we can come back and do that. And come in here with a chopstick as well and get that moss out of there. So this tree is, I think this tree is about eight or nine years old from seed. Uh, I got it a couple of years ago from my friend Nick. This is probably the first real bonsai tree in my collection. So, okay, here's our tie wire there. I might be able to reuse these. Everything goes well today. So let's see what we're working with here. I can't remember if I did a simple tie or if I did some sort of a spider matrix. Okay. Looks like we broke that wire, so that tells us we're done with that. Okay. There's that one. Let's see what we're working with on the other side over here. All right, there it is. Back that off. And, you know, in addition to this being one of my first trees, I wanted to also video some other options as far as the accessibility of material. I don't want to only have all this high-end material that some of you guys may not be able to afford. I really just want to show you all the different levels and stages of development because I really do enjoy developing these trees. Either they're either advanced trees or... All right, these younger ones, let's see what we got here. Can we back that out? There we go. Let's see if we can get that out of there. That's a little tough, so I'm going to clip that and pull it through the top. Just fine. Okay, there's that one. And we should be free. Or we should be free. There we go. All right. Okay. Right, so let's go ahead and get these roots raked out and see what we're working with here. This is a nice little tree. It's already well on its way to developing a pretty nice safari. And we did get some rain last night. So this is pretty sopping wet. This would have gone a little bit more smoothly if it was dried out a little bit, but I had to get this work done today. So no worries. The important part is that we're doing this slowly and gently. We're not overly damaging any of these fine roots here. It's probably a pretty quick little video here. The buds are starting to swell already. This thing is gonna be in leaf in just the next week or two. Perfect opportunity to get in here and take care of these roots. So we are gonna take these back pretty significantly, get all these really long, elongated roots taken care of. We'll push all that energy back toward the base of the tree here. All right, let me get this cleaned up and I'll be back in a second. Now that we've got that washed out, make sure we have these roots combed out fully. So the tree sits about like this. Let's get that tap root out of there. Get this as flat as we can here. There's our nabari here, but there's a bunch of roots down underneath. Now these side ones we're gonna keep, but there's one that's directly underneath here. We don't want that. Okay, let's take a look at this. We've got a few roots up top. This one comes down low. We're gonna remove that one too. These two are actually crossing. We're gonna see if we can move these into a better position here. There we go, that one goes up. This is a real strange root here. So this one is definitely doing its own thing here. That root is definitely causing problems. We're going to remove that backward growing root. Get that out of there. We do need to bring these back a bit more. That's right, all of these roots need to come back. That one 
gonna go straight up. Let's get rid of that. So we are getting a little bit closer here. All right, but I do see a pretty big gap right here. What I'd like to do is add a thread graft. We've got this little sapling here that I think will work pretty well. Let's get rid of this back root. We're not going to need that. Let's get this thing out of here. I think what we can do here, we're going to reduce all those roots off. We're going to just go for one nice root there in the center. Of course, after this grows, it'll, it'll start branching. So let me get my grinding tool out and create our little notch. On second thoughts, folks. I've got this material here, and I think this is going to work a little bit better. We're going to remove that downward growing right there. Gone. Get rid of that. There we go. Got a lot better potential here. This little sapling's got a good shape to it, and it'll make a nice, interesting root there. We put a pretty significant gouge in the root here. Let's see how this root is gonna fit in there. This does seem extreme, but I've seen way too many of these root grafts fail because we didn't go deep enough into the host. All right, let's see how that looks. Rotate that around to the side so you can see. All right, we're gonna go just a little bit further here. Next thing we need is a couple of pins. All right, next, let's use these grafting pins to hold that down in place. I'm going to go right through the center of that seedling there. We have that root coming out centered right in this gap here. This other root is probably going to be unusable, but this one's in a really favorable position. The exterior side of this donor whip is nearly parallel to the surface of that host root. I'm going to really shove that down in there good. We do need to apply some cut putty around there. The best seal we can around this wound. We're going to do that on both sides here. I want to get that right down in there. It's going to be okay if it comes up over the top as well. I'm going to fully seal in all angles on this. There we go. We've got our root in a great position there. Let's look at the bottom. we got the root coming out right where we want it. It may not really do any good, but we can put a little bit of cut putty down in there too. Block that up. Here we go. Kind of an interesting twisting root anyway, so it should help add a natural appearance. Once we get this in the pot, make sure we have these finer hair roots pointed out this way, and we'll see about getting this rear root kind of lifted up into a better position. So when we're chopsticking, we stick at the we stick the chopstick all the way in, and then we jiggle on the way out. And this is going to help fill in any little crevices and pack the soil down in there really nicely. We're going to be a little bit more gentle over here on the side where we have the thread graft because we don't want to damage those delicate roots. We already reduced the root mass on this little whip by about half when we set it up, so we want to make sure we don't damage what's left.
We have a little bit of excess Akadama here. That's okay. I do want to try to leave that graft area just above the soil line. That's going to give it better opportunity to heal. It won't get all waterlogged down in there. Moss back on there. And this is not show moss. This is just water-retentive moss. We use this other piece over here for a sponge. It's kind of nasty. That's okay. This is going to work just fine, and it'll look nice once we get it watered. Alright, there we have it, folks. Quick repot in this nice little dwarf Japanese maple. There we go. Let's get this outside and get it watered. It's backwards. All right, folks, so it's been about a week since we filmed the beginning of this video. We're back here with our Billy V Dwarf Japanese Maple. And what we wanna do now is control the growth of this. We're working to develop the ramification and density of these lower branches. A lot of the strength is staying up here in this top third in the canopy. So what we're gonna do is move you in close so you can take a look at this operation. We're gonna do a little bit of bud pinching to control the vigor up here at the top. And hopefully that will promote some additional growth and energy down in these lower branches. So let's get in close and take a look. All right, folks, so if you're not already familiar with bud pinching, we've got a really great example here. So let's take a look at this branch here. Here's the growth. It started, it, the termination of this is right down here. So we have a first set of leaves here. They're nice and strong, almost fully open. We've got a second set of leaves here, and then there's a third little leaf bud emerging right here. Uh, so that would be the third node right here. And a normal pinch would be removing that very youngest center there, and we pick that out. Now, because we already have a lot of nice density up here in the top, and we don't want to have a lot of excess energy, we're a little bit late coming back to this, uh, but we actually do want to pinch this all the way back to one pair of leaves. So I'm going to remove that as well. Optimally, we would have gotten to this three or four days ago and we would have pinched this out while it was still the smaller size of what we just pinched out of the top. So you can see we've got that. There's another one over here. Now this one here has barely even started to develop that third set of nodes. That's okay. So we're gonna come in here and we're gonna pinch that out. Wanna make sure we're not damaging any of those leaves. We're gonna use our tweezers. You can, twe you can squeeze with the tweezer and rip or you can almost kind of just like the tweezers, this really small pair of tweezers can almost be used to cut through that stem. And that's what we're gonna do. We're really just gonna continue that operation in this upper area of the tree. And we're gonna allow each one of these buds from spring to elongate to one node. But our goal is to get all of the additional extensions out of there. So that's gonna do a few things. One, it's gonna stop the growth at the top, of course. The second part is, as this continues to grow and add more nodes, more and more energy is gonna to go to this branch and it's gonna thicken that node. Even if it never gets any longer, it's gonna actually thicken it because it's gotta push more water and resources up through to feed the upper branches. So when we pinch these back, that's what we're doing is we're controlling the flow of energy and the control of and the flow of energy affects the size, the girth of those stems. All right, this is kind of congested down here. I don't even know what is going on. It's got some unusual growth. We're gonna leave that one for now. All right, and we're just gonna continue around the tree here and we're gonna pinch out all of these small emerging tips and try to control that growth so we can keep a nice small canopy. 
Some of these haven't even gone yet. There's, there's some of these that are not even producing a second node. There's one there. There's a really good one right here in the front. We're just gonna pinch that out. Over here. There we go. Now this one has grown really strong. There's a full set of leaves, second set of leaves, third, and it's already producing the fourth. We're going to pinch that out there. These Japanese maples are always going to try to grow up into a tall tree. And so when we let these run, that's what the tree's doing, is it's trying to extend. And as it extends, it's gonna happily sacrifice the strength in the lower branches to allow it, the tree to get taller. So by pushing the energy back, we're encouraging more back budding, we're encouraging energy distribution across the tree, and we're allowing ourselves to maintain that nice, delicate branching. There we go, got that one out of there. Okay, this one is pretty small. We're gonna leave that alone. Okay, let's get this branch here. Bye bye. Pinching. Now pinching in the spring is one of my favorite activities. So a lot of the other trees in the garden I come out here every morning with my second coffee and I get to check my trees in refinement to, for pinching. It's a really fun activity. If you're someone that likes to be hands-on, doing this spring pinching is a whole lot of fun. Now this one, I'm, I'm actually gonna allow two nodes here because it is growing really, really soft. If your leaves are not pushing out, extremely hard sometimes it's okay to leave more than one pair we don't want to weaken the tree by over pinching it all right there's another one right here let's get that there's one back here you'll see this technique used a lot in your trident maples because they grow so vigorously and they are so apically dominant it's important that we push that energy back down to the lower branches. So sometimes you'll see an extremely reduced top half of the tree and then they let the bottom grow vigorously. Now down here, I'm not gonna pinch any of these back on the bottom. We're only pinching out these tops here. And it's okay if we don't get them all today. I'm gonna continue to come back in here and check this every couple of days for any escaping shoots. So that's a quick introduction to the pinching method. Now again, here, we're not in full refinement, but we are trying to control the strength in the top of the tree. And so we are gonna use that same technique to control the vigor of the top of the tree here and allow the energy to go back down into these bottom branches. Thanks for joining me for another episode of ACP Bonsai. Please like and subscribe and get in the comment section. Uh, let me know what you think and let me know also what's going on in your Japanese maple garden. Have a great week.